What's going on there guys? Earthmaster here checking in on this Sunday, right? Smoky Sunday out here. Yeah, that kind of rhymes a little bit. September 6, 2020, about 11.53 a.m. Just going to bring up this uh, earthquake that struck right around the San Francisco Bay Area. A 3.4 magnitude quake coming in on the globe there. Most recent quake there. Uh, not a big quake, no doubt, but uh, along with everything else that's going on uh, throughout the plate tectonics out here, a lot of large-scale movement uh, throughout the Pacific, uh, 6.3 south of the Philippines area uh, earlier today. Pretty deep activity there and some more further deep movement uh, even further to the west with that 4.8 there. So some large-scale dynamic uh, plate movement being set into motion over the past, oh, I'd say over 24 hours or so. You can see it all the way up here from, from the Greenland area and uh, all the way down through this Atlantic, Mid-Atlantic Ridge here. Uh, just kind of, uh, I'm, I'm really surprised about that 6.6. .6. I know that struck uh, early, earlier, way earlier. Um, I think it was even before I unsuspectedly, or well, unintentionally got up at 2 a.m. this morning to work on my computer because it reset again. But uh, definitely a lot of activity throughout the globe here. And uh, West Coast, for the most part, remains relatively untouched uh, for large earthquakes along the plate boundary. Uh, of course, we've, obviously we've seen some large quakes uh, last year, right? Right around the Ridgecrest and the um, Nevada region, right? But not specifically on the San Andreas Fault section, that plate boundary there, the major plate stress reliever. It's been untouched for uh, quite a while, folks. And, you know, it's getting down to that point of how much more how much more time is going to pass um, before it eventually decides to uh, release uh, the pressure that's been built up uh, for quite some time now. Uh, let's look at the USGS map here, 2.5 and above. Over the last 24 hours here, there's that 3.4 near San Leandro. I can't pronounce that because I have been down to the Bay Area a couple times and I have seen that show up on my GPS. So. San Leandro region, uh, 3.4 on this specific fault, the Hayward, what is this, the Hayward Fault, right? Hayward Fault Zone. This here is a, an interesting fault structure. Uh, it is right kind of just east of the San Andreas Fault System there. Uh, also a major stress reliever and can have large earthquakes as well. Uh, So yeah, not, you know, this 3.4, not a big earthquake at all by any means there. Uh, looks like there was a prior 2.6 there. Uh, just a couple minutes. It looks like maybe about, oh man, about seven or eight minutes or so before the larger 3.4 quake here hit. So it's something to watch. You know, we do see uh, some four shocks on occasion that could trigger a uh, major quake. But uh, just something to watch. So let's see, a little bit of history. Well, I'm not gonna do that this day in history uh, until later tonight, but uh, specific history on this Hayward Fault section here. Uh, back in October 21st, 1868, a uh, 6.8 magnitude, 6.8 earthquake struck on this specific region. Uh, one of the most destructive in California history, of course, this area, right? The San Andreas Fault section here. 1906 earthquake and whatnot. Uh, can see some major quakes, but also just to point out, you know, uh, a 6.8 magnitude quake would do some tremendous damage in this region here along the Hayward Fault. You got Berkeley and all these uh, high class towns within the region here. Runs along Fremont. Um, I just, I despise that area to be, to be honest. Uh, not a good area at all. But uh, that doesn't mean I want anything bad to happen. But uh, a large earthquake, no doubt, will occur on this specific fault here in the future, if not today. You never know. Uh, the last major quake, like I said, within this region here, 6.8, 1868. So a little bit of time to build up uh, some pressure. Uh, according to a study here, the Hayward Fault quakes have repeatedly jolted the region in the past and that the fault may be ready to produce another magnitude 6.8 to 7.0 quake here such an earthquake could unexpectedly change people's lives and impact the bay area that's great 
That would just mean that people would be coming up here to where I live. Um, so yeah, a lot of uh, seismic activity on the, in the past here on this specific uh, fault structure. And it's right around, I was looking at, at a map here, it's right, well we can go ahead and type this in here real quick here, A word vault. I'll show you guys here real quick the uh, specific one that I'm looking at on the map here. I think this is it. Yeah, here we go. Here it talks about the uh, you know the M6.8 earthquake there. I want to make sure this thing's not messing up on me again. I did. Uh, I worked on this thing for an hour and a half, hour and a half last night, 2:30 in the morning, after it reset. So I'm pretty sure I'm solid as a rock right now when it comes to stability and uh, any possible threats uh, as far as shutting the computer down. Um, so yeah, here's the Hayward Fault section that's similar, right smack dab in it, in it on it, that 3.4 and that 2.6. Uh, the 6.8 struck kind of, let me see if I can bring that up here. This is actually a different map than I'm seeing here. Let's go over here to the USGS page. That's the one I'm actually on. There we go. Yeah, so 1868, definitely uh, some damage back then, right? Not a super large quake, but it is uh, pretty close to the major plate boundary there. This is still a little bit different than, uh, than what I'm looking at. Huh, maybe there, there's a different uh, setup for the mobile page and then, uh, then the desktop page here. But anyway... Here's a specific section of that fault that uh, ruptured there, 1868, still within that vicinity of what we're seeing today. Um, and no doubt a lot of stress has been built up within that region. Uh, intervals, right? Intervals, according to scientists and you all, uh, you, I was gonna say uologist. <laughs> Geologist? <laughs> they do the uh, interval little thing here and you can tell Well, you know, history, a lot of people forget history, right? They, the 1906 quake, the 1868 earthquake, a lot of damage. People rebuild, right? They rebuild and they forget. Generations go by and, uh, you know, people forget that uh, earthquakes can happen there and dangerous ones can wreak havoc um, on everyone's lives that live there in the Bay Area. So note that the interval between successive Earthquakes has varied from 95 to 183 years, averaging 150 years, and is now more than 150 years since the 1868 earthquake. So, 1868, 1968. Yeah, we're definitely uh, we're coming up on uh, you know that time where we could be seeing a, a large quake within that uh, fault structure there, the Hayward Fault. Uh, two factors combined to make the Hayward Fault very dangerous here. The first is its location to the urban area of the Bay Area. Uh, let's see, back in 1868, there were only 24,000 residents living in Al Alameda, Alameda County. Now there are 2.4 million people, great, and counting. Uh, let's see here, a second factor making the Hayward Fault so dangerous is that the most recent damaging earthquake was more than 150 years ago, as I mentioned there. USGS scientists have found evidence for 12, cake, 12 quakes on the southern Hayward Fault during the past 1900 years. Notably, the last six, those are the years right there, occurred at intervals of 95 to 183 with an average interval of 150 there. So, uh, scientists are convinced that the Hayward Fault has reached the point where a powerful damaging earthquake can be expected at any time. So whenever we see activity like this, a little four shaker to a little bigger quake, you kind of have to uh, keep an eye out folks and just be prepared there. So not, you know, it's not like they don't have earthquakes there. They're, they do, but it's something to watch. Um, Let's go back to all magnitudes here. See what's happened within the region there. A little microquake there. Looks like 
see those sometimes those right there can be uh, an indicator too when we see these microquakes below 2.5 that one occurred uh, let's see here 1.2 so that one actually occurred prior to yeah prior to these other two here so definitely some movement out there folks be on guard it's, you know if you live out there in the Bay Area thank God I don't but if a big one ultimately hits here uh, no doubt I will fill it up here in Northern California a little bit of quakeage up here east of uh, Redding Shingletown region up here in the mountainous area but uh, just some looks like microquakes happening up there and uh, Southern California looking about average as well we did see that little quake there near Santa Barbara and northwest of Santa Barbara region See that 3.8 there near that town i'm not going to pronounce that because i know i will pronounce it wrong again there hasn't been any further movement just a couple small aftershocks following that 3.8 there and of course globally we'll cover that here uh, a little bit later on in the earthquake video update as we get to uh towards the evening time definitely a lot of large-scale movement folks out there around the globe and uh, when that happens, that makes me a little nervous out there, especially here along the West Coast. And, uh, you know, it's only a matter of time. We've been pretty fortunate. We got wildfires and we got drought. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's 2020 and what would top the cake? What would top, what would be the perfect icing on it on the top of the cake right there, right? A major earthquake out here along the West Coast. And uh, with everything else going on, I believe it. I think it's going to happen, to be honest it's just looking likely anyway folks we're gonna jump back here live stream i uh, just wanted to pull in there and uh, mention about that quakeage there out on the hayward fault section 